The land between finally connects the world of Elden Ring to Dark Souls and Bloodborne. While some of these videos seem to flow with their writing, others have me in a state of constantly staring into my pile of research notes until I finally found this. We come to the land between an Elden Ring, but as many have speculated, the land between what exactly? In the very first Dark Souls game, we are introduced to the idea of arch trees, ancient trees that are hypothesized to have been around since the beginning of time, found in the Ash Lake or otherwise the bottom of the world, where the trees are seen stretching forth into the clouds, where the branches can be seen wrapping around various areas in the Dark Souls games, and are thought to function similar to the One World Tree in Norse mythology, holding up the many worlds of the Dark Souls games on top of their branches. Then in Bloodborne's hub area of the Hunter's Dream, we once again find ourselves standing amongst more arch trees that stretch out as far as the eye can see, reaching through the clouds. You might be thinking that Elden Ring's Erd Tree, which across different languages translates to Tree of the Earth, Mother Tree, World Tree, and Golden Tree, is once again following the same pattern of trees holding up the world. And in fact, these many trees may even be responsible for creating those very worlds. The arch trees scattered across these games are clearly reminiscent of the World Tree known as Yggdrasil. But in this case, instead of one gigantic tree supporting everything, instead we have hundreds if not thousands of arch trees supporting and holding up these separate worlds, which much like the Nine Realms, are unified via the different branches. But in Elden Ring, we only see one gigantic tree, while in Dark Souls and Bloodborne, we see what appears to be of hundreds, if not thousands, stretching off into the distance. And more than that, we know that the Erd Tree was created by the Elden Ring, and thus the Outer God, known as the Greater Will. That this colossal thing, whose roots spread across the land, might not be an arch tree at all, but something greater. Showing us what the arch trees really are, and how the entire worlds of Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Elden Elden Ring all came to be in the first place. Dark Souls shows us through many different encounters that arch trees are hollow. The world of Lord Ran in Dark Souls 1 sits on top of a great arch tree known as the Great Hollow. In the Dark Souls 3 DLC, you find a boss inside a long gone but again gigantic arch tree, and the many arch trees seen in Dark Souls 2 Things Betwixt area are also hollow. And as we saw, even the Erd Tree in Elden Ring is hollow, as we faced off against Radigan and the Elden Beast in the game's climax inside the tree. The Ur tree is an arch tree, but it's different than the others that we see. For the Ur tree seems to be even bigger than many of the largest arch trees that we've encountered, and this thing is bright. In my video that kicked off this series, we discuss what the Greater Will's true plan is. As an Elden Ring, we see that the Ur tree is literally feeding off of the souls and bodies of deceased individuals, that the people often give their dead an Ur tree burial, all of which powers the tree, allowing it to grow to a monstrous size, glow a bright gold from all the soul energy it's taken, and ultimately serves to feed the greater will itself. Queen Merica of the Land Between realized what was happening, commissioned Smithmaster Hugh to create a blade powerful enough to kill a god, and remove the rune of death from the Elden Ring, thus stopping the gigantic arch tree from feeding off of the souls of her people. Then later, after the death of her son, she decided to destroy the Elden Ring entirely, throwing the greater will's plan into further disarray. Elden Ring not only showed shows us America's battle to stop the Greater Will, but shows us that these outer gods that are spoken of and influence every world across every game are capable of making these arch trees themselves. That the gods can create and grow arch trees to support whatever society they deem to exist, whether for the benefit of the people existing in them or more selfish reasons. So where exactly is the land between in relation to Dark Souls and Bloodborne in this network of trees? At Elden Ring's opening, we see the Tarnished, who were on a featureless plane of rock cloaked in fog, awakened by the same outer god that banished them, and invited back through the fog to the land between. While no one mentions where exactly the Tarnished were banished off to, we know that they couldn't travel back to the realm of the land between without one serious long journey, if at all, and needed the Greater Will's grace serving as a sort of key to reach the land once again. We also hear of a race of people known as Numans, who we know to be Queen Merica and the members of the Black Knife Assassins, who are said to have come from outside the lands between. We also know from looking at the game's sky and the fact that meteors and such can crash down into it that the land between is open to the cosmos. While the series itself seems to take inspiration from Norse mythology, the land between sounds a lot like the Celtic Other World, a supernatural realm inhabited by deities and dead of everlasting youth and beauty that exists parallel to our own while still intruding into our own world, and in the case of two worlds would exist between them. A world where very 
heroes visit it either by stumbling into it through a cave, ancient burial sites, going underwater, or by traveling across a great sea. But in most cases, they have to be invited into the world by one of its residents, who will then give them something in order to reach it. Well, this could mean that the land between does exist as a sort of Midgard, being at the middle of a vast network of arch trees that stretches throughout the cosmos, connecting the lands of Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring. The game's director, Hidetaka Miyazaki, when asked about the land between's meaning, has said that its name is meant to invoke feelings that are very mysterious and very ethereal, and the intention behind its meaning is meant to simply serve as an invitation to this mysterious new land that is a starting place for the world. Meaning that the land between isn't only a mysterious realm running alongside, or rather intrudes into other worlds like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, but being at the center of everything is the literal starting place for the entire arch tree network that weaves and wraps around every other world, a land that the gods themselves would be inclined to fight over. When looking at the many gods across all the games, we do see many similarities. In Elden Ring, the ending involving the outer god known as the Lord of Flame and Frenzy sees the Erd Tree being burned down as the land between is covered in ashes as this outer god wishes to burn everything down, causing the world to reset from the one the greater will created. Similar to the description for how the Age of Ancients ended in Dark Souls, where in the beginning the world was unformed, shrouded by fog, a land of grey crags, arch trees and everlasting dragons, but then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. And then with the dark they came, and found the souls of lords within the flame, thus began the Age of Fire. Furthermore, when getting the Frenzy Flame Seal from a woman named Hayata in Elden Ring, we then touch her, causing her eyes to melt, foreshadowing the coming of the Frenzied Flame to the world of the Land Between, similar to how the Fire Keeper in Dark Souls 3 has also been stripped of her vision. When she is given eyes, she mentions how the eyes show a world without fire, a vast stretch of darkness, but tis different than what is seen when stripped of vision. In the far distance, I sense the presence of tiny flames. Ashen One, Link the Fire, for the Lords of Cinder, for the Ashen Prisoners, for all those held to preserve the fire, Link the First Flame. The Frenzied Flame is set to do to the Land Between what it once did to the world of Dark Souls, and burn down the order of whatever previous god controlled it, allowing it to create a new one. And as we see across all these games, the inhabitants of the world fight to protect the order of whatever outer god brought them forth in the first place, with all of them creating their own names to describe these gods, as they serve as overarching influences among the various worlds that lie upon the arch trees. Whether it be the Greater Will, the Formless Mother, the Formless Odin, the First Flame, Lord of the Flame and Frenzy, or even the Moon that appears as an influencing presence throughout Bloodborne and now Elden Ring, even the name Moon Presence that seems to come from the Moon, similar to how the Elden Beast is sent down by the Greater Will, both seem intent on hunting down and eliminating the influence of the other gods. And it's the continual battles of these gods for control and influence over the various worlds across the eons that seem to shape the stories of all these games, with the secret mention in Elden Ring's story showing us that things weren't always so dark in the beginning. The deep lore of these many games poses so many questions that I'm always a little worried about getting it wrong, or horribly mispronouncing everything, but what really grabbed my attention was learning about how everything may have began. Resurrection from death to uphold a task that others cannot seems to be a recurring theme throughout these games. In the beginning, before the eternal power struggle of the gods began, there may have existed just one single god, one being responsible for the design and creation of the arch trees, and thus all the ensuing worlds to come along with all life itself. This god is referred to in Elden Ring as the One Great, the god responsible for all of creation, for all that there is came from the One Great, then came fractures and births and souls. From this god eventually came all others who watched over the land, and eventually came to fight over placing their influence on them. As for the One Great, its power seemed to wane, and for unknown reasons, it eventually split into the opposing halves named the Greater Will and the Lord of the Flame and Frenzy. This split is symbolized by the two gods' apostles known as the Two and Three Finger Apostles that when put together make a whole hand. The Greater Will, rather than simply attempting to influence the world as the other gods it once created has, set out to gain full control over the land that served as the starting point for the world, and created yet another arch tree that this time could feed off of the souls and bodies of the land's inhabitants, so one day it could regain its former power. But if none of this made any sense, 
and I saved my best piece of evidence for last. When fighting the Elden Beast in the final battle, we end up in a space much like the Hunter's Dream and Ash Lake, where we see hundreds of the Greater Will's arch trees spreading out as far as the eye can see, showing that not only may the Greater Will be the only god capable of creating the arch trees, but is attempting to create as many of them as it can to regain its former power. Where we solve the Greater Will's plan in this video, and if you subscribe to just one channel this week, I hope you think of me.